Without getting too technical, I will attempt to explain what this fundamental principle has to do with swimming efficiently. When you are swimming efficiently, or as some would say, holding or feeling the water, the same central ideas that keep airplanes in the air are helping you move forward in the water. That statement alone, without knowing why it is inefficient to pull straight back in the water to gain advancement in a di desired direction, might seem a bit confusing. Hang with me here, though. We know it is wasteful and unpro unproductive to pull straight back in the water, so the next question is only logical. What do we do? Let's first think about what it means to feel abstract things like water or even air. If you have ever broken up the monotony of a long car trip by sticking your hand out the window to play airplane, you have felt the air. Huh? I'm not talking about how humid or dry or how hot or how cold the air may feel. I'm talking about how the air pushes your hand up as the air rushes beneath it. What causes your hand to rise with seemingly no effort other than to raise your fingertips a bit to create a little pitch with your hand just shy of horizontal? That minuscule change in the pitch of your hand creates more airflow underneath your hand and pushes your whole hand and arm up. That's the Bernoulli principle. You weren't flapping your hand to create lift like a bird might have to do with their wings to start flying from a rested position. You positioned your hand in such a way that the airflow was underneath, naturally pushing your hand up. To get your hand down, the opposite effect is needed. Pitch your hand down just shy of horizontal, and the airflow is now on top of your hand, and your hand and arm will shoot down. If you're at a stop sign, this does not work. It is hard to feel the air. We need the speed of the car to create this airflow. This is feeling the air. This is using the air in an efficient way. Little effort, desired result. The air becomes more solid with more speed. The Wright brothers had this hunch in 1903 and literally flew with it. So how does this transfer to the water? How do we feel or hold the water? We cannot drive our cars into the pool or ocean and stick our hand out the window in the same way to feel the water rush below our hand. In a calm pool with no current either way and without pulling straight back, what else can we do? One word here will describe what we have to do. Skull. We are going to skull the water. There are three very specific and fundamental skulls that will help us instill this concept into our muscle memory. I will explain the first of these skulls in detail. The other two work in the same way, just in another place within the stroke. What does it mean to skull the water? Instead of pulling the water straight back, we will pitch our hands down a bit, slightly below horizontal, and press the water to the side. The first of the skulls is probably the most important. To develop and practice it, I always try to use a pull buoy between my legs so I can isolate the forward movement accounted for to only my hands. The catch skull in front of your body produces two key actions. First, it actually lifts your body out of the water ever so slightly, much like an airplane would be lifted off the ground during takeoff. You are not going to fly out of the water like a dolphin with such a little movement, but it does provide lift for your body so that you are swimming on top of the water. You may hear coaches telling swimmers to swim downhill. In order to understand this, swimmers need, to catch, need this catch skull to raise their bodies up. Second, and most importantly, this skull provides forward movement without pulling back and creating a slipping current behind your hands. The water is pushed to the side. The current is moved away from the swimmer's path, ready to grab more water in another stroke. This, ca this catch skull also promotes another good swimming technique, front quadrant swimming. The power of the crawl stroke, be it in the pool or on your surfboard, is being created in front of you. Much like I described having imaginary ladders under the surface of the water, to use them most efficiently, you would reach for the furthest rung in front of you to grab. In the practice of this goal, reach as far as you can in front of you. In a sense, you are reaching to catch the water in front of you and hold it, hence the name Catch Skull. At this point in time, once you have caught the water with your first skull, the stroke starts to progress, and this is where it seems to an inexperienced swimmer like the hand is being pulled through the water. That's what it looks like. The stroke does have to progress, and in reality, there is most likely some pulling back going on. However, if the water has been properly caught in front of a swimmer, now it is time to hold it with a power skull.
The transition from the catch to the power scroll involves keeping your stroke in, in the front of you, in the front quadrant. After the catch scroll, press your shoulder forward toward the opposite wall in the direction of where you are going. In transitioning to the power scroll, imagine reaching over the circular part of a barrel. This will press the shoulder forward, keep your elbows high, and press your forearms down. Now you are in the position of the power scroll. In reality, this is where you will hold the water that you caught. This is where you'll be pulling your body past the rung of the ladder you grabbed. To the untrained eye, it would seem as if your hand is pulling through the water. In reality, your body is being pulled past your hand. This is where most of the forward motion will occur. The last skull is called the finish skull. It happens below your hips. And the full stroke, what is happening at the end of the stroke, is just pushing all the water that you caught and held with the first two skulls out the back. You are giving that final push of the ladder rung that you grabbed in front of you. That's it. Three major skulls, each a fundamental element of the underwater stroke. Each skull can be practiced one lap at a time. I always add another drill that ties each skull into the full stroke. If you have ever been around any pool deck, you have inevitably heard of the catch-up drill. It is designed to see how much forward movement you can take with each stroke. These skulls need to be practiced a lot to ingrain the feel of the water into your stroke. Here is a simple set I do before I work out and after the workout is done. I use it to warm up to remind my muscles how I should stroke. I do it to warm down to again remind my muscles how to properly stroke, efficiently after, especially after a tough workout. The more tired your arms, the more likely you'll be pulling your hand through the water rather than pulling your body past your hand. Here it is. 353 style, 25 scroll down, 25 catch up, drill back. The first 50 is the catch scroll down and then the catch up drill back. And I always focus on the catch scroll within the catch up drill on the way back. The second 50 is the power scroll, elbows down, tick tock scroll, and then another catch up drill back. And again, in the catch-up drill back this time, I focus on the catch skull and the power skull working simultaneously within a stroke. The third 50 starts with a finished skull down, hands at your side down by your hips, as far down as you can reach. Skull down and then catch-up drill back is where I focus on all three skulls in conjunction within the stroke. Each catch-up drill back, I focus on the part of the stroke that the previous skull enhanced. Try it, happy swimming, catch that water, hold it, pull your body past your hand.